My name's Brandon. I am going to get married to the love of my life, but the problem of this story is this. My sister, she's a racist. Yeah, I'm getting married to a Chinese woman. I'm in love with her. I'm even learning Mandarin in the side to surprise her. But when I brought her to my house, my parents absolutely loved her. But someone that didn't love her was my sister. And I didn't even know my sister's viewpoints were like this. Well, guys, here's where the story absolutely explodes. It was during Thanksgiving when I find out my sister has the audacity to say this. My fiancé and I got engaged recently after a four-year-long relationship, and we've been getting to know each other's family more before we officially started planning the wedding. For some backstory, we met when she was hired to do some audits for the company that I work for. She's an accountant, and I'm a financial lawyer. During these audits, we were working closely together. It was a little awkward at first because we're both very shy, but... After a week, we started warming up to each other. On our last day of working together, I invited her to lunch at a cafe in the area that I frequent. Nothing serious, just a casual meal between co-workers. That's when I sensed there may be a spark there. But I did not want to impose, and I tentatively asked for her number. And she obliged. After that, we were talking and texting each other for actual hours. My fiancé is Chinese, and she came to the U.S. for university and stayed after graduating, so she's not a citizen yet. Her mother, dad, and younger brother are back in China, and she goes to visit them once per year. She came to the U.S. to go to school because she wanted to be a career woman, as opposed to a housewife, and yeah, I admire her drive. She did not really have any friends in town. I mean, all her friends were from college, and they were just out of state or out of the country, and it was hard to socialize at work. As I was not really friendly with my coworkers either, so I understood. We'd been talking for about two months before we tried to go on a date. May told me she had not seen much of the city because she was scared of walking around alone. So... I took her to a nice restaurant near the water edge, where I knew there would be a lot of cool shopping areas. We had a lovely meal and then just walked around while window shopping. I used to work in that area before I moved to a place deeper in the city, so luckily, I knew all about it. We found an antique shop with a lot of cool and old stuff, and May saw a candle holder in there that she really liked and I bought it for her. She keeps telling me she'll pay me back for it, but I always sneak the money back into her bag. After around six months of dating, we decided we wanted to get more serious. It may seem like a long time for a lot of people, but we wanted to take things slow and just be friends at first. It was at that point I wanted to start learning Mandarin. My company, well, has a program where if you want to learn a skill that'll benefit the company, they'll pay for it. And learning a language counts. I was doing this in secret and planned to surprise May with it when the time was right. A year passed and I asked her if she'd be okay with meeting my family. She was nervous and reasonably so since it was a step and my parents and sister already knew of May because I talked to them about her a lot and they'd been nagging me about meeting her. I figured a neutral setting would be best for everyone to meet in a neutral setting. My family is usually very chill, but I did not want May to get spooked. There's a festival that happens in the summer here, lots of food and games, and I thought that would be a good place for everyone to meet. I arranged a time and a place that made sure May and I got there early enough to have time to prepare. I could tell May was really nervous, so I told her I'd do most of the talking if she was not comfortable with it, and for the record, my family can be a bit overwhelming at times, but not really in a bad way. They just get overly curious and ask a bunch of questions, which was why I chose the festival so there'd be more doing and less talking. My parents are both retired, so they didn't have much excitement in their lives as of lately. They rely on their pension to get by, and I do offer some monetary assistance when I can. Their house is paid off, so 
the only thing they really need to worry about for bills are food <laughs> and the occasional unexpected expense. Mom was a nurse and dad worked in finance. As for my sister, she's well and she had an interesting adulthood to say the least. Back when she graduated, she decided she wanted to go to college and spend most of her early adulthood partying, getting into trouble. So much so that my parents had to kick her out of their house because her lifestyle was bringing trouble to the doorstep. After a near-death experience, she came back home ready to change, so we made a deal. If she was serious, I'd pay for her to go to school, but she has to stay in school, so she seems to be keeping up her end of the bargain. She lives in an efficiency closer to campus and is studying cosmetology. Anyways, my sister and my parents arrived together. Everyone exchanged greetings, and my parents were really nice, but my sister seemed standoffish. Like, she's just kind of looked at May, then looked at me, and asked, Uh, this is her? Well, I asked, what did she mean by that? And she just kind of laughed and said she thought I preferred blondes. I have no idea where she got that from. I mean, I have no super specific preference when it comes to women, Especially not in the looks department, nor have I ever expressed anything of that sort. So I don't know where she got that from, and I told May to just ignore her. I figured it was just a bad joke, and boy, I wish I would have been right. Unfortunately, it was not right. We started walking around the festival, and I noticed my sister being kind of weird. Like every time May would start talking or point something out, she'd seem annoyed or would change the subject. At one point, when we were getting funnel cakes, I pulled her to the side to ask what the heck her problem was, and she said there was no problem, but I was not buying it. She had been rude to May from the moment she met her, and needed to fix her attitude now. She got mad at me and stormed off, and we did not see her for the rest of the festival. May was worried she caused some kind of rift between us, but I told her it was not her fault at all. I was just tired of my sister being rude. It did kind of put a damper on the rest of the evening, you know. My parents promised they'd talk to her, and I don't know if they did or not because it did not work. My sister got progressively more aloof. Every time I brought May around, and one time I even invited her to dinner at my parents' place. You see... My father is half Italian and learned to cook from his Italian grandmother. He loves to impress people with his food, so he went all out for May. I'm talking homemade hand pasta, pizza, tiramisu, you name it. He even grew his own tomatoes to make the sauce and everything. When we got there, the house smelled absolutely incredible, and Mom was in the kitchen setting the table and offered us a bit of lemonade and fresh bread while we waited. May wanted to help, but my parents insisted that she relax and asked my sister to help instead. My sister got mad and say May offered to help and they should just let her help. But my parents shut her down and said, hey, May's a guest, so she's not going to be lifting a finger here. The dinner had not even started yet and I was already annoyed with her, but it did not stop there. While we were eating, my sister started making all these weird, microaggressive remarks. Like she asked May if she needed chopsticks, since that would be easier for her than a fork. Then she asked if she wanted seaweed and soy sauce to make the food more tasting to her like. May politely declined every single time, but I could tell it was making her very uncomfortable. And it was making me mad. Like... I was about to lay into her, but Dad told, well, told her first, and said to cut the nonsense out. My sister sulked the entire rest of the dinner, but everyone else just ignored her and we had a great time. Both May and I got plenty of leftovers to take home with us, and Dad even offered May some fresh produce from his garden. He even asked her what kind of stuff she likes to cook so he could grow some for her. On the drive home, I asked May if my sister's remarks had bothered her, and she said it bothered her a little, but she was used to that kind of thing, and she did not want to say anything that caused contention at the family dinner table. I wasn't really sure what to say, guys. 
I don't want her to feel like she can't stick up for herself when my sister is straight up disrespecting her. It's a cultural thing, I think, to be more reserved and quiet. And I told her if she ever felt uncomfortable and needed a break or just wanted to leave, she could ask me if I want to get some gum. It'll be our safe phrase to get the heck out of there. Another incident occurred right before we got engaged. I was accompanying Mei on a trip to China to finally meet her family, and I even stopped by my parents' house just to drop off a bit of cash for them because I'd be gone for 30 days and wanted to make sure they were okay with expenses. My sister was there. And when my father mentioned the flight, she asked what was going on. I'd intentionally not told her about my trip to China because I did not want to hear whatever dumb opinion she'd have about it. And of course, she had to open her mouth and tell me to be careful about the food because they eat dogs and bats over there. I was ready to knock her upside her head. I probably would have if mom did not stop me. I got out of there in a hurry and put her comments to the back of my mind because I did not want to bring any bad vibes to the trip. It was a long flight and a long drive to finally get to May's childhood home. When we arrived, it was just her mom and dad and brother there. I was extremely nervous. On the way, May taught me a few phrases, most of which I already knew, but this was my chance to really impress her and her parents, and at this point, my Mandarin was getting pretty good. I still had trouble understanding native speakers when they spoke so fast and my pronunciation was a bit off. When May introduced me to them, I thanked them for graciously inviting me to their home. There was a collective shock that made me smile, and I like to think that the opener was what informed the rest of the trip. While well, May and her mom went out for groceries the next day, I had a talk with her father and brother about proposing to her. They said they already knew May was happy with me because on their phone calls, she never shuts up about me. They gave me their blessing to propose. The next day, I took her to a nice spot and I popped the question. I did it. Of course, she said yes and her mom cooked a huge dinner and had a bunch of family over who congratulated us. I called my parents and purposefully did not call my sister because I did not want to know what she thought about it at all. Anyways, when we got back, it's the end of October, so things are transitioning from Halloween to Thanksgiving. My family always has Thanksgiving at my parents' house. We don't do anything super big since it's just the four, well, now five, <laughs> of us, but everyone brings a dish to lessen the load on Dad who does take care of most of the cooking, and I usually take care of the drinks. About two weeks before Thanksgiving, we met at my parents' place to work out the de details. On the way, I asked May if she wanted to make a dish, since it was her first Thanksgiving with us as a quote family, and she suggested egg tarts. It's a Chinese dessert that she's made for me a couple of times, and I knew my parents would simply love it. When we got to my parents' house, everyone else was already there, and I told them I'd bring the drinks as usual and buy anything extra that was needed. My sister would be helping mom and dad in the kitchen, since they were getting older and a little bit slower. That's when I said May wanted to bring a dish to. I vouched for how good her egg tarts are, and my parents thought it was a wonderful idea. I already saw my sister start a roll in her eyes. And I braced for whatever smart remark she was about to say, and she goes, No, we're not doing that. I'm not eating any Ching Chong food. The room got very quiet, and May got up and left, and my mom went after her, and I was seeing absolute red. I'm not one to yell, but I've had enough. I unloaded on her. I told her I was sick of her disrespect and that May was going to be a part of this family whether she liked it or not, so she'd better get used to having her around and fix her attitude or I'd fix it for her. As much as I do for her, she should not be treating my fiancé so crudely. Well, I stormed out after that and took May home. 
As we were driving, I asked her if she still wanted to come to Thanksgiving or we could just do our own thing if she wanted. There were plenty of nice places that did Thanksgiving dinner out still open and we did not have to eat with my family and I'd even prefer we didn't if it was not a safe environment for her. May said she did not want to cause any issues for me with my family so I should go and she would just stay home and cook something for herself. Well, that's not going to happen. I refused. I was going wherever she went, and it was at home, then so be it. I'm sure my parents would understand, and as soon as I got home, I was going to call my mom and tell her I'd drop by, grab some to-go plates, but May and I would spend Thanksgiving at home. My mom said there's no need for that, because after we left, my dad laid into her for her racist comments. And she got mad because we were all, quote, taking May's side. Yeah, she's so childish. She said she just would not come to Thanksgiving because she did not want to catch COVID anyways. I don't know where this vile behavior was coming from. If my sister had always had these beliefs or if she fell into some weird rabbit hole during the height of the pandemic, I don't know. But I know she had her challenges in early adulthood, but... I thought she'd grown into a much better person. Apparently, I was wrong. When I hung up from my mom, I went to tell May what happened. She suggested that me and my sister make up somehow, and that was not happening. I'm not sure how things like this were handled in China, but I told her it was not uncommon for certain family members to be outcasts for their behavior. At some point... Everyone got sick of it and either they got the message and stopped coming around or were uninvited from everything. She asked if my parents were able to handle the cooking. Well, on their own? I doubted it, but I told her I'd find them some help if they needed it and I had a few friends who did not really do anything for Thanksgiving and I'm sure they'd be more than willing to help with a plate of food. I contacted my buddy Josh. You see... I knew he and his wife did not really do anything for Thanksgiving because they were both so far from their own families and flying during that time was an absolute nightmare. Also, Josh's wife is a fantastic cook. My parents don't mind that they were very much, quote, the more the merrier type of people, and my dad loves to entertain. Josh was totally on board with it, too. When Thanksgiving came around and was cooking up a storm in the kitchen, the dinner ended up being incredible. May and Josh's wife seemed to hit it off, and I kicked myself for not thinking of introducing them to each other sooner. I guess in the back of my mind, I was hoping things would have worked out differently with my sister. Speaking of her, I guess she called my mother sometime during dinner to be nosy, and Mom said she sounded disappointed. I guess she expected us all to be miserable in her absence or something. Mom went to take her a plate of food near the end of dinner, and May's egg tarts were a hit, by the way, as I knew they would be. Joss said that he'd be willing to help out with cooking and stuff every year if it was going to be this fun. I'm sure my parents would love to have them back. After all this, I was strongly reconsidering my relationship with my sister. I was paying for both her housing and schooling, and she would not spare May an iota of respect, even for me. Honestly, it was so disappointing, because she's always used to just tell me how she wanted a sister, and how she could not wait for me to get married so she could finally have a shopping buddy aside from mom. But I guess May wasn't good enough for her, and that just made me incredibly sad. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So, yeah, I thought that was the end of the story, but oh, no. OP's sister is far from done. I have three updates, and we're about to figure out what the heck is going on with OP's sister. So sit back with your favorite beverage, kick your feet up from a long day of work, and relax. Because update number one is flying your way. After a lot of careful thoughts and talking with May, I've finally decided what I'm going to do with my sister. And the answer is nothing, but not nothing in the way you'd think. Before I made this decision, I made a point to reassure May and let her know that none of this was her fault. 
If anything, I'm glad I know what a vile, racist, garbage heap of a person my sister really was. So, we're about a week into December now, and there are some things that need to be squared off. I'm not talking about Christmas, I'm talking about bills. As it stands, I help my parents with about half of their bills, and I also help my sister with all of hers. For my parents, I went and paid their bills for myself, and for my sister, I did absolutely nothing. I got a call from her the next day asking where the money was for her rent and college classes. She said her landlord was absolutely breathing down her neck, and she only had a week left to pay. And her classes were filling up, and I just stayed quiet. And she asked me if she could come by for the money. I said no. I'm not paying for anything for her anymore. If she wants to continue going to school, she's going to have to figure it out herself, and I told her not to bother coming to my wedding either. Well, hell, don't bother coming by my house or my job. Just stay as far away from me as possible because I am absolutely done with her. At first, she got mad and asked if May had brainwashed me into doing this, then she started lamenting me. That I'd ever brought May around her because her presence had obviously caused a rift in the relationship. I let her talk, let her dig herself deep into a hole, and when I could finally get a word in, I told her that my decision had absolutely nothing to do with May and everything to do with her. She had been nothing but cold and unwelcoming towards May from the very moment that they met, and I recounted every disgusting, racist remark that she's made to May. I could not in good conscience keep supporting her if she was going to be so violent and awful to my future wife and the lady I love. I can't keep putting May in a position where she feels uncomfortable and attacked for the things that she can't even control. I mean, I wanted May to feel safe and welcomed into my family, and I can't do that unless I cut my sister off. My sister took issue with me implying that she was a racist, and I told her I wasn't implying anything. She was racist. I was just simply stating facts. I don't want to be associated with that type of person anyways, and if that means cutting off a family member, then so be it. She switched her tone and tried to be apologetic. She said she just thought May was not good for me, and she did not mean any harm with the things that she'd said. She said she'd apologize to May for things that she said, and I was told it was too late. The damage was done. And the only reason she was eager to apologize now was because she had something to lose. I wished her luck with figuring things out and ended the conversation there. Then I blocked her on everything. I don't feel bad about it either. Update number two. Hey guys, I know, I know, it's been a very long time since I've updated, but a lot has happened. First, good news. May and I are married. We had the wedding in China, since it was logistically the most sensible choice. It was either to bring my mom and dad over there, or try to bring her whole family here. I mean, come on. The ceremony was lovely. We had it and the reception in this beautiful garden and then had a huge dinner with all of May's family, who were super friendly and welcoming, by the way. We spent an extra two weeks in China since it would be the last time she'd be able to see her parents and brother for a while. She was going to try for citizenship, so she won't be able to leave the country for quite some time. Though, I was secretly working out a way to fly her parents and her brother over to surprise her. I know everyone's probably wondering what happened to my sister after I cut her off. Well, here's a bit of an update there. All of this is secondhand information that I've gotten from my mother. After our conversation, she begged her landlord for an extension. Then she went over to my parents' house and asked them if she could stay over at their place. But they were skeptical for two reasons. One more serious than the other, and the first is because of my sister's past. I mentioned in a previous post that she got into a lot of trouble in her early adulthood. Well, one time, the police showed up at my parents' house in the middle of the night looking for her in relation to a drug bust. It was later found out that she was innocent and just a bystander, but my parents have been weary about having her around since. 
Visiting is one thing, living there is another. The second reason is that if my sister was staying there, that meant I won't be coming around. Now, I would not stop helping my parents with their bills or looking out for them in general because it's not their fault, but they were correct in thinking I'd be around less because I cared about May's safety and comfort more than her feelings. My parents loved having me and May around, so they were presented with a difficult choice, save their daughter from the streets and, quote, lose their son and daughter-in-law or not help their daughter and have her potentially become homeless. In the end, they decided my sister needed to face the cold, hard consequences of her actions, and she had multiple chances to self-reflect and change her behavior, but she chose to be an antagonist and continually bite the hand that fed her. They wished her luck and sent her her way. I don't know what's happened to her since, and I'm content not looking into it. I'm just too busy enjoying this next chapter of my life with May. Updates Number 3 This is the final update. So, I saw my sister-in-law in the last place I expected to, so May and I are back in America and back to work. Every Wednesday and Friday, we take lunch at the same time and try out some new places in the city that have good reviews. Yesterday, it was May's turn to pick, and she chose a dim sum place that recently opened up. It's takeout only, but they were slowly building a dining area. It was owned by this Chinese family who'd lived in the area for quite some time. We were standing around in the order area looking at the menu when one of the workers called to someone behind the counter. Some had spilled something on the table and where they placed the completed orders. Out from the door labeled employees only comes my sister. She's wearing an apron with spots of water spots all over it and her hair is tied back with a bandana and she looks terrible. Last I heard from my parents, my sister had a job, but she never told them where and they also told me she was very close to being homeless and had to sell a bunch of stuff, including her car in order not to lose efficiency. That gave her a month to find a job. I guess she wanted to keep it because it was relatively cheap, so even with a minimum wage job, she'd be able to keep up with rent. I don't know if she was still in school anymore. I didn't know. So the moment she sees May and I, her eyes go wide and she tries to just turn around and go back behind the counter, but someone else is behind her with a mop and a rolling bucket, so she's trapped. She makes a face at us and then rushes to clean up the mess. May and I preoccupy ourselves with looking at the menu more, and I can tell that she's uncomfortable. But not the same kind of uncomfortable as before. I think it was the awkwardness of the situation, like my sister had not even crossed my mind in the last few months. May and I have been focused on saving up for a new home. Our apartment was nice, but no place to start a family, plus rent prices kept going up and up and up. We placed our orders, and by we, I mean May, since she can pronounce the dishes way better than me. When they were ready, I went to grab the plates, and when I leaned over, I spotted my sister standing by a dish station watching some steamer baskets. I've never really believed in the weird cosmic karma that supposedly causes these kind of coincidences, but after all this, I'm starting to rethink my stance on karma. May thought it was kind of amusing, but also sad, that my sister landed here. My parents were surprised too when I told them that they guessed that she was probably too embarrassed to admit she was working there. It was probably the only place that would hire her, because she doesn't really have any skills. I feel bad for her a bit, but not enough for me to get involved. She made this bet. Now she can lie in it. But come on, guys. No one else finds it just a wee bit funny. She works at a Chinese restaurant after all her hatred of words. Yeah, actually, I definitely started believing in karma after that day. Alright, so I'll be honest with you guys about this story. OP's sister is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, no way at all was OP's future wife ever rude to the sister, never out of the ordinary or anything at all, and 
OP's sister just went off the rails. I mean, why would someone be this toxic to someone who was so nice the entire story? But here's the craziest part to me, and this actually blows my mind. Brandon, aka OP, or original poster of the story, he was paying for his sister's college and giving her side money so she could pay for whatever she needed. I mean, who in the right mind would be in that position and still go out of her way to do the things she did in this story? I mean, yeah, obviously OP had to cut his sister off. She was being so rude. I do want to hear from you guys, though. What did you think about this story? Drop your comments down below and let me know this one very specific question. Say, for instance, you were in OP's position and you go through the exact same thing, do you cut your sister off even sooner? Or do you give her a few chances like OP did in this story? Let me know your perspective on this one, guys. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want daily videos, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys tomorrow, and just remember, it's cool to be kind. Don't be like OP's sister. See you guys later.